Hi guys, it's Barnaby from Spurred On and this is another Monday edition of Five Things We Learn. And today it is of course five things we learnt from the Tottenham versus Leicester FA Cup game. So let's get straight into it with number five. Leicester, I'm afraid to say, are not a flash in the pan. They performed excellently with a scratch team. Half first teamers, half reserve teamers, just like Spurs did. But let's face it guys, Claudio Ranieri has got them so well drilled. Everybody who's saying that there's no way that Leicester can stay in the top four this season, I don't agree. I think the way that Manchester United are slipping up, the way that Chelsea have slipped up, Everton can't put a run of games together. It's only really Spurs and Leicester have been consistent over the whole of the season. And of course Woolwich, but I'm, I'm loath to talk about them. Manchester City keep losing games. And the fact is that the way Ranieri's got them drilled and the way that the whole squad are buying into the, the way that they're playing, just shows to me that they're going to be there or thereabouts. Now, of course, some would say they haven't won in four games, and that's true. And Vardy is out. Uh, he was injured at the weekend. He may well be out for Wednesday's game against us. Mares didn't even play yesterday, guys. That's how good they are. Their best player didn't even play, and they caused us trouble. Now, of course, we were on the front foot the whole game, but they were hitting us on the break, and they looked dangerous every time we were, they were going forward. So as far as I'm concerned, when you've got tactics that sound and a squad that's buying into the way the manager is, is asking them to play and the philosophy that he's asked of them, that just bodes well. And as long as they don't have four or five bad injuries to their best players this season, I think they're going to be there or thereabouts. And it just shows to me how difficult a game Wednesday night against Leicester in the uh, Premier League is going to be for Spurs. So in terms of number five in our things we learned from Leicester, just as we did when we played them away earlier in the season. They're a good team, they shouldn't be taken lightly, and they're, they're, they're going to be there or thereabouts. At number four in the things we learned from the Leicester game, to me, it's obvious. The central spine, the back four of our central spine, is absolutely vital to every chance we've got of being successful this season. I'm not talking about the spine all the way down the middle up to the striker. I'm talking about Hugo in goal, Toby Alderweireld, Super Jan Vertonghen, and in front of them, Eric Dyer. If we get an injury to any one of those four or they're not playing on the pitch, I think it means a return to the old Spurs. I really do. On Sat uh, sorry, yesterday in the cup game against Leicester, Vaughan played in goal. Now, I would say that Michelle Vaughan was not at fault directly for either of the goals. Now, some of you may doubt what I say about that because of the second goal, uh, he saved a point blank shot and it went straight back to the striker. However, it's unlucky that one. It could shin off anywhere and came off his feet. But to me, the bigger picture for me is that the back four, when Vorm is in goal, do not look like they're comfortable with what's going on. I don't know if it's simply a matter of communication, uh, whether he doesn't shout as much or tell them what to do as much as uh, Hugo Lloris does, or if it's just they feel more shaky knowing that they've got to stop uh, more chances from getting shot at, at Vorm than they would with Hugo, because Hugo obviously is a better all-round goalkeeper. Yesterday, Toby Alderweireld played, and I would hazard to say that I think he had one of his less good games for Spurs this season. And I don't think that's his fault. I think it's a matter of the fact that Jan wasn't alongside him and Hugo wasn't behind him. So that kind of triumvirate of confidence and success wasn't quite there. And as a result, he was trying to put out fires that those around him were kind of uh, setting in the first place. And as a result, he didn't you know, have his greatest game in a Spurs shirt. Good news is, of course, for the Wednesday game against Leicester, uh, Jan will be back, Hugo will be back, and Eric will play in front of them. So. As far as I'm concerned, as long as we keep those four fit, they are the bedrock on which all our chances of getting in the Champions League, going on a cup run, potentially winning the Europa League are based on. We've got to keep them fit. If we don't, then it's like going back to old Spurs defensively. A little bit kamikaze, putting doubts in the minds of not only all of the fans, but also the players on the pitch. So, number four, keep those four players fit and on the pitch. Number three in the things we learned from the Leicester game yesterday for me, it's that possession isn't everything. Yesterday we had 73% possession against Leicester. And you'd think, you know, when they talk in the stats packages, when they talk on television about who's played best, they always start with possession. But for me, yesterday just showed how isn't, it isn't everything. Because just as it was at the King Power Stadium earlier in the season when we drew one all, we had all the possession there. 
It was about how dangerous Leicester looked on the break and how many chances they created, even though we'd had all the possession in the game. Let's face it, it's what Leicester wanted. They want us to have the ball, probe, 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 keep probing side to side, side to side. But if they can keep their 11 men behind the ball, keep it narrow, tighten the gaps, then they know that they've got the players to hit us on the break and make chances for themselves. And that's even without Vardy and Mares yesterday. So when it comes to Wednesday night in the Premier League, it's going to be exactly the same. We will have a lot of possession. We'll make chances, the odd chance for ourselves, and we've got to take them. But the question will be, how do we defend when they break on us? I hope Vardy doesn't play, but even if he doesn't, they have players like Ajoa. They have players with the pace of, of Mares to hit us and hurt us. Damari Gray played yesterday, who was a player we've been interested in, but uh, in the end, Leicester got him off Birmingham City. He looked dangerous on the break as well. It's going to be about whether we can keep a clean sheet. I say this a lot, I'll say it again. If we keep a clean sheet on Wednesday against Leicester, I think we'll win the game. But we've got to be patient because they will be so happy just soaking up the pressure, soaking up our passing, soaking up our attempts to break through their back, back eight who are going to be behind the ball all the time. If we can be patient, if we can keep a clean sheet, not let them run the channels in behind us, not let them stretch us, don't let the game open up too much in the second half, that is how we win that game on Wednesday. And I think if we want to really push on and hope to get in that top three, top four, it is a game we have to win. So number three in the things that we learnt against uh, Leicester yesterday, it's that possession isn't everything. At number two in the things that we learnt from the Leicester game, set pieces need to be worked on for Spurs. I know a lot of fans are very angry with how we've defended set pieces this season. And it's true, we do always, in fact, I would say this isn't just a this season thing. I'd say one, we give away far too many free kicks in and around the box. Not necessarily always uh, free kicks that they strike at goal from, but free kicks kind of on the angle. Our fullbacks tend to give a lot away and, and balls that come in, in behind our back four from those free kicks always look like they're dangerous and we're gonna concede from. And we do concede from a lot of those. Yesterday we conceded from a corner. I felt it was a little bit unlucky, actually, because Alderweire had lost his man, but in a way, it was because he was blocked off at the last minute from Nasser Chadley. That's not always going to happen, but we do look dangerous conceding set pieces. However, to me, it's not just about how we defend set pieces. We've got to try and be more dangerous from our attacking set pieces as well. And I know a lot of people talk about how they don't think Christian Eriksen's corners are good enough. Now, for me, I don't totally agree with that. Yes, he hits the first man quite a lot of the time, but the thing with Eriksen's corners, and I think I've said this before, He's trying to get so much pace and whip on it all the time that it's very, very difficult to put it in the right spot every time. It's a, it's a real technique that you have to master, and there aren't many players around the world that can do it time after time after time. However, what I will say about Christian Eriksen's delivery is at least one or two times a game, he gets it right on the money. And that's why, for me, we've scored quite a few goals, I think four or five goals from corners this season, where Eric Dyer or Toby Alderweireld has got across the front of the front post and nodded it in. Very similar, in fact, to how Leicester scored their goal yesterday. So I, we do need to improve our delivery, and I think maybe Christian Eriksen could get one or two more on the money each time. But it's better than it has been in the last few years, I have to say. I've been sitting alongside a fan at White Hart Lane, a friend of mine called Martin, who said for years we never score from corners. And let's face it, this season we've scored a number from corners. So we shouldn't be as negative about that as some people are. But what I would say is, both defensively and attackingly, there is room for improvement on our set pieces. And that is number two in the things that we learned from the Leicester game yesterday. And finally, in terms of what we learned, from the Leicester game yesterday, it's not new, but it's something that's just been adding up and adding up and creeping up and creeping up, so I'm gonna talk about it. We just have to stop giving away leads where we've gone one nil up and we let them come back. I'm now gonna read you a list of the times this season where we have been in the leading games and we have let the opposition come back. It happened again yesterday. It's happened against these teams this season. Stoke, Leicester twice, both away in the league and yesterday, Arsenal, Monaco and elect twice, both home and away. West Bromwich Albion, Newcastle and Watford. That is nine times this season where we've been winning and we've let the opposition come back and take at least a point in the league or come back in the cups. Uh, that is too much to be coincidence, I'm afraid, guys. Just in the same way that last season where we kept scoring winners in the last minute of the game was because of how fit we are, this to me is a confidence-based issue and something to do with how we deal with the fact that we're 1-0 up. I know the players keep talking about how they know that they've got to push for that second goal, and of course they do, but it's about finding that middle ground and finding the confidence in knowing that when you're 1-0 up, 
you've got to try and make, if it's in the first half, you've got to make your way to half time. Don't let the momentum shift like we did. We've done it a few times where we let the opposition con uh, to score just before the half time and the whole momentum shifts. If you keep yourself 1 0 up at half time and then keep 1 0 up going into, say, the 65th, 70th minute, then that's when the game opens up. The other team have to throw the men forward and you can pick them off at will. I used to remember when we had Gareth Bale in our side and we go 1 0 up in a game, I would just relax because I'd be like, well, if we keep this up until the 70th minute, basically the opportunities for Gareth Bale to counter attack will be so open and so often, especially when Lennon was playing as well with the pace we had, I always felt we were going to win those games. That isn't happening at the moment. Those opportunities aren't there for us. We aren't keeping our leads for long enough to allow ourselves to then get the second and third. And we've got to learn from that. If we want to get top four, we've got to take advantage of these situations where we're ahead. Because let's face it, most of the teams in most of the matches in the Premier League, the team that scores first tends to win the game. And we are scoring first quite a lot. So we've got to make sure we improve on that. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of the five things that I felt we learned from the Leicester game yesterday in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at SpurredOnTV. Come on, you Spurs. Hey guys, by for Spurred On. This is my post-match review after we just drew two all with Leicester in the FA Cup. Strange feeling. Uh, I feel like I've said this after other games. 